In this video, I'm gonna show you guys my top 10 street food in Kyoto. So I've been going around Kyoto for a few days now and there's just so much street food that I want to introduce to you guys. Right now we're in Nishiki Market but there's just so much more so we're going to include this place and the surrounding area. I can't wait to show you guys all of this. If you guys want to know what videos I'm producing before these videos come out, definitely check out my Instagram page because I'm always uploading to my stories. Alright, let's get our food on! What better place to start this food tour than where we are right now, Nishiki Market. Nishiki Market is known as Kyoto's Kitchen and it's been around for 400 years. And one of the main reasons why Nishiki Market opened up here in Kyoto is because this very spot runs clean and cold groundwater, which was used as a refrigeration system by shop owners back in the day. Now, there are about 129 stores crammed in this narrow 400 meter market and it's equally crowded with locals and tourists alike. Number 1. Tako Tamago at Kai So you can find this octopus and egg combo everywhere in Nishiki Market but I'm throwing down at this popular furikake and specialty side dish shop, Kai Look at this one, they have a tamago in this one Inside of this head, they've stuffed a quail egg in there I think they've stuffed it right there Oh, it just it looks so creepy a little bit it smells a little bit sweet. Definitely have like the octopus smell. Let me just take a bite of the head. It's slightly sweet. I would have imagined it to be sweeter the way like it's colored. But what's nice is that the octopus, it's tender. I thought it was going to be a lot more chewy. You generally don't see this in Tokyo. Um, at least I haven't seen it in Tokyo. I just love how they put the quail egg in there. Whoever thought to put a quail egg in an octopus? What a brilliant idea, right? Number 2. Tamagoyaki at Tanaka Keiran This shop is known for its ultra fluffy and elegant tasting dashimaki tamago made only with their high-end Kyoto eggs. Dashimaki tamago is a type of tamagoyaki but it uses a special dashi soup and is usually not sweet. Their baby omelette is also quite popular but today I'm gonna show you their signature dashimaki tamago. Check that out, look it's so... So this is a Kyoto special called Kyo Dashimaki. The eggs are from Kyoto itself and they've just made it fresh just now. It's just so soft and fluffy. You can see it just like bouncing right now. Oh, let's take our first bite. Mmm, that's amazing. It's seasoned perfectly. It's like a hint of salt. Sometimes the tamagoyaki is like a little too sweet for my liking. This is perfectly seasoned and it's so light. Like you can eat this all by yourself, no problem. But it's always better to share with someone. So, Michael, help me out. It's like seasoning is perfect, as Paolo said. It's really soft. You know the one that you get? Like, it's like really hard. I mean like that, that one's as good as, as is, but this is super soft and nice. Number three, soy milk cream koroke at Kona Monja. So this shop specializes in tofu and they have just so many different like tofu renditions. They have soy milk donuts, yuba sashimi, and they even have soy milk soft cream. But as you guys know, I love fried food and I had to go with their soy milk cream koroke. So usually what koroke is, is just fried mashed potatoes, but this, what they've done, is just cream. If you look really closely, they just have cream in there. So it's like a nice fried shell and it's still warm to the touch. Oh, you can still see the steam coming off of it. Oh, that is a taste of heaven. Nice and crispy outside shell. I don't know if you can see, there's like little brown little chunks in there. They actually have some arengi, some mushroom is in there, which is nice. It gives it kind of like a mushroom soup kind of taste, and it's delicious. It's so soft, I can barely hold it. I'm like smashing it. You hold it normally. Itadakimasu. Oh. Mmm, 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 I like this. It's creamy. Inside. I don't know if I taste soy milk though, but it's so creamy. Knowing that it's healthy, getting fried food is always a plus. Check it out, there's even a bar here. 
Number 4. Oysters at Watahan Watahan is one of the few shops where you can eat giant fresh oysters and other sashimi. It's always full so when you find an open seat, just grab it. Lemon de. Lemon de, hi. <laughs> Which one's bigger? This one's bigger. <laughs> are you sure? Look how big these oysters are. It's bigger than my head. It feels like it's bigger than my head. We've been walking up and down and trying to find the place that has the biggest oysters. And this place does. And there's actually a nice seat here, which is pretty cool as well. So you can eat just right in front of the store. Thick. That is insanely creamy. That's one of the creamiest oysters I've had. Look at the juices in there. Look at that. It's amazing. You don't get regular oysters. Like I've been in the States and I've had oysters, but they're never this big. These are just so huge. It's like a meal in itself. What I love about this place is that you can just order all the sashimi just right here. Number 5. Fish Cake at Marutsune Kamaboko Marutsune is known for their amazing handmade fried fish cakes. I just get so Marge Simpson crunk just looking at the items on their menu. It's still hot. This is supposed to be a yuba skin which is made out of tofu. It also is supposed to have ebi in it which is shrimp. They just served it right now so it's like still hot. It's like almost burning my hand. It's supposed to have yurine in it which is supposed to be a root. Let me just open that up. Oh there you go. There you go. Look at that. So basically it's a fish cake and it has all these different ingredients. That's good. You can see how oily it is. My hands, you see my fingers are just straight up oil. But it's delicious. So uh, the outer skin is a little bit like hard and crispy but not so much. And then the inside is, is chewy like a normal fish cake should be. I like it because it's sweeter and fluffier than a lot of fish cakes that I've tried. You can definitely taste the umami in here. Like there's a lot of flavor. It's like it's it's amazing how much flavor that they've packed into this. Number six, grilled fish at Notio. Notio is a river fish specialty store dating back to 1912. They offer seasonal fish like this sweet fish original. But be prepared, it may not be for everyone. <laughs> Check out this Ayu! So the lady says you can eat everything. You can see how salted that tail is. Mmm! Oh, it's good to stop. Oh, it's good to stop. I got his teeth stuck in my teeth. In that <laughs> Recommendation, don't eat the head unless you want their teeth stuck in your teeth. Mmm, look at that, but check out all the eggs in there. The brown stomach lining or whatever guts is not my favorite. So my final take, it's actually <laughs> worth trying because you know, you don't get this a lot. The eggs actually taste pretty good. The meat is good. The only thing is there's a lot of bones. So if you're not into bones, then maybe like avoid this one. It's worth trying if you want to try a little something different. Just don't eat that. Now, let me take you outside of the market. Number seven, cheese tart at Bake. <laughs> this one is located in Teramachi, Kyogoku. To be honest with you guys, like, I wasn't planning on doing this because they already have a shop in Tokyo, but it's just so good that I had to recommend it. They have the regular cheese tart, but right now they have a gente, which means limited time only, and they're doing a blueberry version of it. Let me just show you what it looks inside. Oh, the same old cheesecake. Look at that creamy filling in there. Oh, yeah. It has a blueberry in there, it has a cheesecake, and this nice crusty shell. All right, so let's take the first bite. Ah, oh, oh, it's so delicious. Perfect creaminess. The shell itself is so crusty. It's like a hard cookie kind of crust. The soft portion here, almost like a pudding inside. It's that creamy. And the blueberry tart just like goes well together. And then the hard crunchy cookie shell, it is a winning combination. Plus it's my second one today already. 
Number eight, karaage from Umeshin. Yeah, but. <laughs> Umeshin is an award winning karaage joint with several shops located only in Kyoto. So, this shop behind me has a fried chicken, and you guys know I love fried chicken. One thing that's nice about this place, it has all different toppings for the fried chicken and I'm all about the toppings. It has teriyaki mayonnaise, it has mayonnaise, it even has matcha flavor. But if you're familiar with my videos, you know I love spicy food. So I had to go with a golden cayenne pepper. Now let's see how spicy this is. Look at that, you can see all of the spices that are wrapped in. It's almost like the McDonald's shaka shaka chicken. Oh, this just makes me so happy. That spice kicks you right away. It is spicy. It is spicy, it's salty, it's a fried, and it's good. Meat is tender, hard, crispy, crispy outside. Maybe it's because when we ordered it, it was freshly fried. That's probably one of the nice things about this place is when you order it, they fry it right away. It might be over seasoned for some people. I'm actually okay with the salt, I, got, I like salty foods, but people that don't like salty foods, it may be a little bit too much, so I suggest asking them to just like go easy on the toppings. Number 9. Black Ramen at Gogyo Situated on a side street next to Nishiki Market, you'll find this unique ramen shop. It's not your typical ramen shop, as it's been designed more like an izakaya, aka drinking restaurant, offering various side dishes and hot pot items. And this shop is owned by the same company who created Ipudo Ramen, a famous tonkotsu ramen shop. So I just got the burnt miso ramen. It's cool because it has some noodles, it has some chashu. Look at that. Nori, of course. They even have cabbage in there. This is a special one that's a little bigger than like the average normal one. This just tastes of soup. It's actually not as thick as I thought it was gonna be. Pretty soupy. The noodles are thin. The noodles are like a little bit harder than normal. It has its own unique flavor and the broth, but you don't get any of the bitterness that you would think from burning it. It's quite delicious. It's taste is chashu. That, that chashu hits the spot. You can taste the burnt flavor in there. It's like it's been oven roasted. What I like about the soup, it has a lot of chopped onions in there. I'm all about that egg life. I love how they just give you one and a half eggs. <laughs> it's like, oh, not two, just one and a half. I am digging this. And number 10, Melon Pond at Kofukudo. Had to finish off with this newly opened Melon Pond bread shop, tucked away on the sidewalk of the main street, Shijo Dori. Just walking by, you're instantly hit by the sweet smells of the freshly baked goods. Matcha? Matcha? All right, look, we got Medumpan in Kyoto. They just gave it to us and it's still warm, so it's melting the soft cream. They had matcha and vanilla, so went with the vanilla because it's the one that's sold the most here. You can hear it, it's like still hard to the touch. You can see that they still have like the sugar crystals at the top. Not a lot like some melon palm that I've had before, but it still looks like they have some. Just gotta take a bite of this. Oh, that is a sugary shotgun to the dome. Oh, it feels like I'm eating like frosted flakes. Bread itself is so sugary and crunchy. This is insanely good. I love how crunchy and warm the meadow pan is when you bite in you get this like hit of cold vanilla ice cream it goes so well together you can get the melon pond just by itself but my recommendation is to get the vanilla ice cream with it oh man i can't i can't stop eating this The bread, the, like this part, is like almost like a biscuit or something. It's like you're eating cookie ice cream with a little bit of fluffiness. We just had ramen, but I gained the whole thing. All right, so that concludes my top 10 street food in Kyoto. 
I'm always trying to make these videos better. So let me know what you liked about this video as well as tell me what you didn't like and something that you want me to improve so that I can make these videos better for you guys. And if you want to see more of my guides in Tokyo or throughout Japan, I release a video every Saturday morning Japan time. And definitely subscribe and hit that bell button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.